Welcome into the video guys. In this video, I wanted to get you primed and prepped on some of the gear that I'm using to photograph in 2021. It's time for that what's in my camera bag for this coming year and this whole year. So on my table, you'll see a lot of the gear that I'm going to be shooting with in 2021. I do wanna say, I'm not sponsored or paid by any of these companies to say this. This is just the gear that I'm using. I will also say throughout the video, while I'm talking about these, you can find affiliate links linked in the video description below to all of this gear if you wanna check it out for your own photography. Now, I'll also put my video from last year, the camera gear that I was using in 2020 in the card showing up on your screen right now. So you can do kind of like a compare and contrast some of the gear that I was using versus some of the gear that I'm using this year because there are some drastic changes to my camera bag. Now, speaking of the camera bag, I'm using this bag still, same as last year. This is a F-Stop Gear Tilopa 50 liter bag. Obviously bright orange. Um, I've had so many camera bags over the years. I literally have a closet full of camera bags across the hall. This has always been my favorite since I got it. It's so comfortable, extremely lightweight. Uh, in the link, there's a link to the bundle package, which is what I got. It's got a large ICU or internal uh, camera unit inside the bag. Um, and you can just fit a lot of gear into it. You can move things around. You can also fit like a small lightweight jacket. You could probably even do a one night overnight backpacking trip with this bag alone and come out just fine with straps. You can put things on the bottom like a tent or a sleeping pad and everything would be great for one night. I don't know about multiple days, but if you were going out just for one night, this bag could definitely cut it. So this is the bag that I'm using and I have just really enjoyed it. And you can fit all this camera gear into the bag with it. So let's start off with the camera that I'm using. Last year, I was using this camera, which is a Sony a6000. This year, I upgraded to a Sony a7R II. Now you may be thinking, why go with the a7R II when there are new models that have come out? The a7R IV is out. Um, I looked at the specs on everything, and since I was upgrading to this camera, I just kind of looked at the two cameras side by side, the two and the four, and I just thought for the money, I think the two is just fine for what I'm doing with my photography. Maybe you're looking to do something a little bit more, but I felt that the two matched my photography a lot better with uh, what it had to offer and also the price point. And I just looked at them side by side and I would encourage you to do the exact same thing. You don't always have to get the newest model. You can get an older model that'll do exactly what you need for photography and you can get it for a fraction of the price. And that's what I did with this camera right here. You'll see a telephoto lens attached to it. I'll get to that lens in just a second, but the A7R II is what I'm using to take my photos with. That's time lapses, that's stills, some video with it. Uh, I really like this camera, really enjoyed using it too. Also the old camera, I'm still using this A6000 for kind of like a second shooter, second body option. If this one goes down in the field, I do have a backup, not as um, extreme as the A7R II, but still does the job primarily. So I can use this with like a telephoto lens if I'm shooting with the A7R II with a wide angle lens and this will do the trick. I've also shot multiple time lapses at once using both of these cameras at the same time, and that works out great too. So this is kind of like my backup camera. I still use this camera a lot for video, and I have the Rokinon 12 millimeter lens attached to it, um, which is great for like low light shooting, night photography, uh, low light video, anything like that, because it is, an f2 lens uh, all manual though so you have to watch that so with my cameras down let's go to my wide angle lens that i'm using this is a tamron 17 to 28 f 2.8 lens i got this lens this year they actually sent it to me to test and i loved it so much that i was like hey i'm i'm gonna buy this lens so how much do you want for it shut up and take my money 
So I, I really enjoy this lens. Uh, I think it can do basically everything that I need it to do for landscape photography. I'm a little concerned about the f2.8 in it, but I shoot night photography so rarely that I think the 2.8 is gonna be just fine. Uh, it's not a huge deal for me to just have a 2.8 instead of a two. I think the 2.8 will be just fine. And the optics and the performance on this lens has been incredible for all types of photography. So I've really been happy with this Tamron lens. Now let's stick with Tamron then, I guess. And I've also recently been using for probably like the last quarter of 2020 going into 2021. Uh, I've been using this Tamron 70 to 300 lens for my telephoto shots. And I do have reviews on a, a lot of these lenses that I'll also put in the video description for you to check out too. And some of the cards showing up on the screen. This is a great lens. It's very lightweight, extremely small, which is what I like. That's also touted by Tamron as saying it's the smallest and lightest telephoto lens on the market that you can get. This Tamron, the wide angle, and this 70 to 300 are only Sony E-mount. So you do have to have a Sony E-mount to be shooting those. But this goes again from 70 to 300. It has a 4.5 to 6.3 aperture and which isn't like the widest that you can get, but I shoot that wide of an aperture so few times in landscape photography that I'm really not concerned about that. I mean, the widest on this could be F8 and I would still get this lens. So no big deal there. The only thing I don't like about it is it is an external zoom. So when you do zoom, the column does come out, which I don't necessarily like. It makes it really goofy and, and long looking whenever you are taking photos and, and kind of just bulks up the in-field workflow. Um, but overall, love this lens. Optics on it are incredible. I've been using it for a lot of my telephoto shots uh, and it's just been an incredible lens and I've really enjoyed using it. Let's stick with telephoto then. And let's go to this lens, the Sony 70 to 200 F4. This lens is an absolute beast. It, it performs great in the field. Not only is it a performance beast, it's also a weight and size beast. Um, it's very heavy, not as heavy as the 2.8 that they make of this lens, but it is significantly more heavy than the Tamron that I just talked about. And you may be asking yourself, why are you still having a 70 to 200 when you have a 70 to 300? Well, that's a really great question. I don't have an answer for you. I don't know. Maybe I'm just hoarding all of my camera gear and, and that's it. This lens was broken in 2020, just like a lot of our plans and experiences in 2020 went down the drain. This lens also went down the drain and it was in repair purgatory for about six months. Uh, finally got it back at the end of 2020. Going into 2021, I'll probably be using it a lot for video content, second shooting, telephoto types of, of photography, and you know, just using it sparingly here and there. I, I've really liked this lens over the years. Super sharp. I'll probably use it with the A7R2 a lot when I am doing those really nice and crispy telephoto shots that I want, you know, a G Master lens for. So this is a great lens too. Since it was repaired and sent back to me, it's basically like a brand new lens because they cleaned everything. Um, they repaired all the issues that it had and I've just really been happy. When it did break, the center column, the zoom ring right here actually snapped off and you could actually bend it and open up the entire lens. So frowned upon on that end, um, but it works great now. Let's go to kind of like a specialty lens that I've been using. So this is a Lens Baby Velvet 56 f 1.6 lens. And I've really been loving this lens. It is the most challenging lens I've ever used for outdoor like nature photography, but it's also the most rewarding lens that I've used for outdoor nature photography. It puts like an ethereal velvet look on the edges of your subjects when you are in the widest max aperture of 1.6. Um, so you can't really use this for like night photography because 
of the velvet ethereal effect that it puts on your images. Now, if you go to like F5.6, F8, that slowly dissipates the smaller aperture you go. So you can use this for landscapes. It will give you kind of a, a stranger look, kind of more of an artistic look, I guess, for your landscape photography. I haven't tested it out too much in situations like that, but in these small macro scenes, uh, I've been loving this lens. It's performed great. It's more of like your artsy kind of lens when you find those small scenes and you want that ethereal macro look. Um, but I've been loving it. I really enjoy using it and um, the, the effect that it puts on my landscapes. Again, most difficult to work with that I've ever used, but also when you get it just right, the most rewarding lens that I've ever used for my landscape photography. Lastly, let's talk filters. I know everybody loves filters for landscape photography. Um, I'm using Nisi filters right now. So circular polarizer in here. I also have two ND filters, one for like little longer exposures and then one for really long exposures. So two ND filters here, uh, a six stop and a 10 stop. So those are the filters that I've been using for my landscape photography too. That's essentially all the gear I've been using minus some of the tripods, which I have like a tripod graveyard. I break them all the time. I'm always looking for new tripods. So those are so interchangeable throughout the year. I didn't want to include them in this video because next week I could probably be using a different tripod. So this is all my camera gear for 2020. I want to thank you guys for watching again, not sponsored all links in the video description below and a lot of the individual reviews for these lenses if you want to go more in depth on if you're looking to buy something like this the more in-depth reviews are in the video description too can't wait to see you guys out on the trails in 2021